So we're live right now at Crane's Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. There is a vintage snowmobile show going on outside, and we're going to go out there in a few minutes. But before we do, we've got some business to take care of. A good... I think we said 28 feet. I think you came on board. Yes. It's been very helpful. So, uh, yeah, happy to do it. Yeah. And uh, here we have 26 uh, legends of uh, Eastern racing that we have inducted so far. And, uh, this is something that we started back in 2017. Uh, they didn't really get recognized. Uh, for what they did uh, here in the East. And so we decided to start our own Eastern Colonial Racing Hall of Fame. And uh, there you have it right there. We have uh, promoters, uh, drivers, driver promoters, and uh, there's a couple of them that have passed away. You can see the black ribbon. Oh, yes, yeah. Across the, uh, Top of the frame there on the upper right are the ones that have passed away. And, uh, a couple of them there, Teddy Wynott, down on the bottom. Yes. The third one in. He yeah. was uh, the flagman for most all of the major events here in the Let me try to get a little closer. And, uh, he came from, actually came from St. George's Ferry. Uh, he started out uh, as a flagman for the local stock car tracks, and when snowmobile racing began, uh, he immediately took to that, and uh, he was their flagman and uh, one of the directors for USSA for years. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, many, many top racers there. Um, one in particular. Uh, was Herb Yancey, who was probably undoubtedly the, the winningest Eastern racer amongst the bunch. Uh, race for a team A ball. And we also have. Right over there, right? Yeah, with a beard. Yeah. Is the signal going in and out? What uh, What is this looking like for you guys? If you could let me know in the comments, I'd appreciate it. But yeah, please continue, Mitch. Sorry. Okay, uh, we have uh, two ladies now that we inducted. The first one was Judy Rinaldi. All right, that's all right. You can go. We'll... Okay. But yeah, thank you, Mitch.
and so medium to two F. Patches too. Yeah, we have patches. Wonderful. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, Glenda. You're welcome. Cool. All right. We're going to head outside now and check out the action. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm just getting my mittens going here. All right. So this is the moment you've all been waiting for. How are you doing? Hey, Bruce. How are you? How are you? Good, nice to see you. This is Bruce Borbart. Happy New Year. You too. Do you mind being on camera? I know. As long as we're at the uh, Cranes Museum. Yes. And meet the Soldier Racing Hall of Fame. Yeah, for sure. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. We are. Yeah. Boy, what a lucky day. And, and this is the winner of the, was it 75 or 76 Kilkenny Cup? Here. Look at you, you're gonna master the selfie today. <laughs> <laughs> all your YouTube fans. You having a good time? Yeah. Do you like all these old sleds? Yeah. You're just gonna sure. show him. You yeah, just got Bruce an signed for him. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you autographed it for him, and we got a picture. Oh, sweet! Get the autograph. Yeah. Get up close on that. Very nice. That's awesome. Cool deal. Yeah, he's so shy. <laughs> Now, I've got DVDs for you guys for doing this with me. Oh, yeah. One for each of you, and I've got one for you as well. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, my pleasure. Yes, yeah, have a good day. Cool deal. Well, good meeting you guys. Yes, yeah, good to meet you. Cool deal. Yeah, thanks for coming on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a walk down the aisle here. And if you're just joining us, we're live at Green's Snowmobile Show. Lancaster, New Hampshire at the Crane Snowmobile Museum we just came out of. How you doing? Hey. Live on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, good. Nice to see you. Now, is this your, yours? Or? Yeah. Do you feel like talking that up for Facebook and YouTube? Or? Um, I don't know a lot about it. Sure. Uh, early 70s. Made by Yard Man. Yeah. It's called Snow Cup. It's got a little tiny JLO engine in it. Um, about all I know. Nice. Does, does this make my butt look big? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes everything look big. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm going to give you guys some DVDs for being on camera with me. Oh, nice. We can hand in one of those. Thank you. thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So, this is about the time the kitty cat came out and they were really trying to. Piggyback on that, or was this before the kitty cat? A little bigger, okay. Um, yeah, I think there were quite a few ones that made mini ones back. Yeah, like the little skipper. There's a couple of those here. Swinger. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna come around behind it. But go ahead. Did you have more on that, or? Sure. Well, that's all right. So if the if the youngster was happy with the kitty cat, they might graduate a year or two later to this. I think, yeah. And eventually to a full size sled. Yeah. yeah. I think I think after when things got, liability became a problem, that the companies kind of shied away from bigger than the kitty cat. I think. Oh sure, yeah. 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 Cool deal. Well, good. Yeah, I appreciate it. No problem. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Cool deal. Hey, 
doing? Good. How are you doing, guys? We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you bought a new Polaris? Oh, yeah. Nice. So these rumps we're looking at are the Ray Parento collection, or part of the Ray Parento collection. He's got more of them at home. But, uh, Got a husky going by. I think. Oh, I think it's Paul Crane on a husky. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll catch up with you, Ray. Yeah, we will catch up. Oh, and I still got that thing in the car. Oh, from... yeah. Cool. Yeah, I lost you last time. I, <laughs> I know. I left oh, early. <laughs> but yeah, we'll catch up with you on that. Here's Paul Crane. Do you mind being on camera, Paul? Sure, this is Paul Crane of Paul Crane's Snowmobile Museum. He's the host of the event. Do you have anything to comment about what we're looking at today? Uh, I was worried about people coming. We got quite a few. Some guys from New York couldn't make it because it's, they had more snow yesterday. But, uh, it's turning out pretty good Yeah. for the weather, considering it's, what, 12 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad, considering it doesn't feel like 12. Thankfully, uh, I'll give you a good, a good picture of things. Seems like we got more cats than anything. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice problem to have, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You're a cat man. I am a cat man. Yeah. Now, what's your brand, Paul? Would it be Ski Do or? Do you like them all? Ski Do, I'm more partial, but you know, I sold Claris and I sold School and I sold Johnson. Sure. And Snow Brand. Nice. Claris, so. That's true. That's right. In fact, uh, for all of you watching, Paul was the first American to ride a ski do snowmobile in the U.S. or Canada. And he was one of the people to help in, uh, import them into the U.S. here in Lancaster back in the late 50s, early 60s. And he set up dealers all across New England. And, yeah. Pretty good. Good uh, picture, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Good turnout. Yeah, two rows here, and yeah, looking good. Yes. Yeah, he's got a nice collection. This, uh, but this is yours, right? This husky. Husky. I took it out. Why I took it out is twenty-eighth. I they could bring it to New York. They want it in a film. Oh, really? Film they're making. Yeah. Nice. So I got a, I got somebody bringing it down to twenty-eighth. Do it. Good. Something about Amazon. Really? Yeah. No <laughs> Crazy. I'm going to go take a look at it. Good to see you, Paul. Thank you. All right. So you just caught Paul Crane talking up that Husky. He said they want this for a movie. And someone's going to be picking this up and bring it to, did he say New York? I think it was. And this is going to be in a movie. Something about the Amazon, he said. How cool is that? Little teeny mite. Yeah, these are some of the early experiments. They make a modern version of this. One of the issues with this when they came out, there were a lot of positives about it as far as it would go a lot of good places and everything. But um, let's say you're taking this, you're going to climb up a snowbank. If you're knees are right here your knees could get caught under this bar when that bar tips down as it climbs the snowbank and they had some issues with that but other than that these were really really good and they were compact you could put them in the back of a station wagon hey there he is aaron how you doing good mind being on camera cool live on facebook and youtube this is aaron sally he's a collector from what part of vermont cabot yeah nice you got sleds here today? Or? Yeah, I just watched. Yeah. Nice. Your dad and brother coming and everybody? Or? Uh, brother and nephew. Yeah, good. Good. Keep the tradition alive, huh? Yeah. The next generation? Good. Oh, cool. Good deal. Did I give you a DVD last time I saw you in Washington? Okay, good. Good, because I've got more of the same. I want to make sure you had one. Cool deal. How was the drive in? A little slushy. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Cool deal. 
Good yeah. Yeah, we got a good turnout. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Washington last month. They didn't have enough parking for everybody. And that's that's saying something because that's there's plenty of parking there. But that to me that says the the uh, health of vintage, the vintage snowmobile hobby is really strong. Yeah. And new shows popping up and the new shows are all well attended and that's that's a nice time to be into vintage, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the Bethlehem one. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good show last year. Yeah, and then they had one in Newport Center a week or two ago. And for a first show, that was pretty good. I mean, it was minus 20 degrees. So I think that had a little something to do with it. It, was a, it, was, it wasn't a big show. It was maybe like a medium, small to medium-sized show. But the people that were there had good sleds, and everybody was into it and having a good time. Oh, good. It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> cool deal. Yeah, definitely. I'll catch up with you. Take care. Yeah. yeah you Can, do you know any more about that? I, you know, I, I forgot the name of the show, but it's something to do with uh, Amazon. It's an Amazon uh, production. Okay, they're producing it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it, they called up and they needed that particular uh, tight snowmobile. And uh, it's going to be in a scene. Yeah. So they, they're they renting it from Paul. That's yeah, cool. Pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we got another one. Oh, yeah. Traffic director. Cool deal. Got some nice cats here today. Wow, look at this triple. 800 cc's. That's what I'm talking about. Do you have sleds here today? Yeah. Oh, nice. You feel like talking those up in a few minutes? Yeah, a cool. Good deal. Good. Yeah, I'm just going to work down this row and catch up with you. Right. Cool. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, some beautiful cats here today. Are these yours? No. Yeah. It sure was, yeah. ZXTs. Yeah, here we go. Is that Johnson again, I think? So we get a drive by. Hey, how are you? Good, nice to see you. Yeah, go ahead. I got nothing good for you today. No, huh? I I sold almost all of my collection. Oh you did? I just got those two modern ones. And, yes, okay. And another guy, another one that's getting worked on, which is a 72. Yeah. You mind if I put you on camera? Uh, Would you rather not? Okay. <laughs> no problem. I, yeah, I got nothing to say. <laughs> sure. To that's all right. If I had my old stuff, yeah. Sure. But unemployment kill, is killing me. So. Oh, no. That's yeah. too bad. It, it is. Yeah, that can ruin a lot of things, I'll tell you. Well, you know, I think someone was telling me I just had too many toys. Yeah, got to slow down. I still got non-vintage three sleds. Yeah. So uh, I, I hate to part with any more, but I might have to part with one more. Yeah. Say, I got to get a job. Maybe if I get a job in the next couple of weeks, I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm partially collecting uh social yeah and they limit to me as to what i can make and sure just, sure a lot of stipulations yeah you know what pisses me off i worked for almost 40 years they took money out of my pocket for social security and then i found out that my company had to match that oh really and they act like it's their money not my money yeah yeah and it's like why can't i mean they're limiting me to $18,000 a year, and then they're going to stop giving me 
social security. I says, you should just give it to me. It's yeah. my money. Yeah. That's crazy. It's like, yeah. Well, good seeing you, man. I'll see you around some more, but I'm yeah. live right now. So I got to keep moving, but, okay. but yeah, I'll catch up with you. Yeah. Cool deal. All right, more cats here. Yeah, Paul was right. There's plenty of cats today. Let's take a look at some of these signs here. Oh, Mark, this is the Bristol family. Okay. I know these look familiar. So Mark Bristol and his son, Lucas Bristol. They also own that Snow Twister and another cat over there, too, which we'll get to in a minute. I have a feeling that EXT is the one that Steve Fenoff used to raise. Let's see if there's a book on there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. This is Steve Fenoff's race sled. When he drove for Calkins Cat, he raced in the USSA division in 1971, winning numerous races throughout the East. And um, he was reunited with this sled in September when they had the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony. <laughs> I think this is Brian Robillard. This is Brian? Brian? All right. Nice to meet you, Brian. Yeah, do your thing. I'll catch up with you. Cool deal. Yeah, so Steve Fenoff used to race this sled. He's from about a half an hour from here in St. Johnsbury. And I don't know, it ended up in a barn or something, and Lucas Bristol bought it. And he was reunited with the sled this past fall when he was inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, right, uh, right here at the museum. So a lot of history and stories around this sled. These are some of Bud Gordon's snow jets and uh, Kawasaki's. What do we got going by here? I always like to get the sleds going by. Okay. And uh, that guy Brian Robillard, I was just talking to. There we go. Nice. Here comes the party. Yeah. Yeah. That is ancient. Get the patina to it. Yes. Oh, we got a jack in the back here, too. Sweet. Oh, Formula Two. Oh boy, I got a lot of hours working on one of those pieces. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of motor sticking out of that one. Yeah. Yeah, this Lucas Bristol's, I think. Actually, if you widen the front end and change the suspension, it makes a 440 out of it instead of the 290. Yeah. And take the gear reduction off of it if you have a fast sled. Yeah. 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 And uh, in fact, Mike Lauders in 1974 won. Mod three against Jillville, no Jacques Villeneuve yeah. at Eagle River. He won Mod three on a Formula two. All right, yeah, ten lapper. Wow, Formula two. They didn't come out of the hole because they had a short track. Yeah. 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 Cable steering. And it has a gear reduction too. That was yeah. to make the belts last longer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it has it on it. It's still on it. Yeah, well, that was the first thing I took off in 1973. The gear reduction before I got told us to take it off. You didn't need to do that. Sure. <laughs> and the front end, yeah. Did that improve the handling once you modified it? Or? Yeah, a lot. There was, a, a, there was bulletins on the suspension, rear suspension, redesign, change. Widen the front end, change the can. That yeah, that's titanium. No, no. I don't know if it's magnesium or titanium. Uh, magnesium. 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 Yeah. 
So this gentleman in blue is the owner of the sled, Mark Bristol. Is this yours or Lucas's? The sled, is this yours or Lucas's? No, it's Luke. Luke's, okay, yeah. Cool. He'll talk it out. Good. I'll let him do it. He knows more about it than Mike. Yeah. And for those viewing, Lucas is, is his son, is Mark's son. Yeah, that's a sweet ride right there. I think they made. There you go. Over here, too. Look at that. There's some trail riders going by. That was it. I think there's a photo of. There's some trail riders going by. All right, I'm going to get to the front of these cats here. Oh, these are Dave Strouds, yeah. Yeah, Dave's got some amazing slides, huh? One of these? Yeah, nice. In 1974. In 73, we can run the 250. Okay. And uh, George Gordon won the uh, World Series um, at Eagle River in B Stock with one of these in 1974. Yeah. He's in the Hall of Fame induction in 2022. No, yeah. 2020. 2020, yeah. 2020. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, nice. But a little while, we'll catch up with Dave Stroud. That's him with the big hat over there. We'll catch up with him. These are his cats, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna come down this row here. I'll get some kitty cats here. <coughs> oh, that guy that came in on the ski do citation earlier, that's Brian Robillard. He's a regular viewer podcast and he has the distinction of being the first person to come on the podcast live now, when i was a teenager my neighbor had one just like this and we used to do a lot of riding together I'm going to try to hook up a cable to an external battery. So uh, it's a three-handed deal. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm, I'm pulling out a cable to hook up to an external battery just to give myself some extra battery life. And it's going to be. There's one in. Okay. All right, so we're plugged into an external battery, so we can go all day now. All right, so we've got external battery now. We are good to go for... There's a guy that said he was going to talk to us. I don't see. This might be the, some of the Sally family over here. These older sleds. They have an incredible collection of older sleds, the Sally family.
Sleds. Yeah, we got to film those, definitely. That's Paul Crane of Crane Snowmobile Museum. He's hosting this event. Nice little ski dudes here. There we go. Look at that alpine. Briggs and Stratton, if I'm not mistaken, for a motor. Uh, is there a tag on there that says Briggs and Stratton? I think it's a Briggs and Stratton. Yeah, look at those. Yeah, these are something else right here. Early. Hey, there he is. How you doing, Dave? Do you mind being on camera? We're live. No? No? Okay. That's all right. No, stomach's a little shooting. Not feeling so hot? I understand. Right now. Sure. I understand. Well, I'm glad you came up just the same, though. These are nice. Looking good, these sleds. I used to set them up, but this morning it was kind of snowy and bleak, and I said, oh, we'll just set them down. That's right. Yeah, I usually have them up on crates, right? Yeah. Yeah. Set the stands on. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, I did a show out in New York here, November. Yeah. Took three for us and a just a show out there. Yeah, nice. Good for you. That was good. Yeah, these always do well at shows. These sleds. You out there with the big boys, I felt pretty pretty good about. It. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And how are you? Good. Do you mind being on camera? Oh, no, I don't want to. No. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I don't want. I understand. Taken, huh? I understand. That's why I always ask. I don't want to just <laughs> go up in someone's face. And... I'm usually the one holding the camera. Just so I don't have to... Sure. No, I understand. There's an alpine going by. Okay, you're just joining us. We're here for Cranes Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, and they're putting on a vintage snowmobile show today. Everyone's having a really good time. So someone's got a Band-Aid across there, and it says, ouch. I wonder what the story is on that. It must have got hit, I guess. That's a creative way to handle that. Oh, look at this. Wow, I didn't see this the first pass through. 71 TX. Snow prints. Oh, yeah, I don't know, man. We don't do it. We do it. Who's that, Don? Yeah. Yeah, she's good people. Yeah, Don and her daughter. Yes, yeah. They're in mourning. Oh, no. That's too bad. Yeah, that sucks. Then we go out and buy another one. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're smart people. Yeah. That's pretty much what you do once you finally get over the wound. It's true. Now, do you feel like talking these up again, Ray? Or like deja vu all over again? Well, I can tell you more about this one here. Yeah. Let me get up close. 
This is a uh, kind of a custom build sled. There's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just an accumulation of parts, and it's based on a 77 nitro chassis. And then I just started acquiring parts for it. So what I did is I made a Magnum front end, like a 76 Magnum front end. I got the uh, panels from Bill Stahl, uh, the lower panels. And I custom built the, uh, the um, bulkhead on the inside. I had to make it wider to fit this. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the tunnel was shipped from one of my buddies that I bought parts from. I actually sent it right to mail, UPS. Really? From uh, Deer River, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, another gentleman I acquired parts from, Armin Buto. Sure, up in Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh. He had the skid and the hood. The hood was he acquired the hood, and I just I I didn't paint the red part, but I did put the black on and I trimmed it, and uh, then I put a coat of clear coat on it for him. And the uh, the dash is just some parts that I acquired. I uh, um the the engine I probably spent more money on this one than any one any of these other slides that I've had. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Hayes out of All Claire, Minnesota. I sent the motor out. He uh, did a short box with bearings, crank, testing cylinders, and uh, he sent it back to me. He did a nice job. A lot of the same guys that I use for parts over uh, four or five years. I've been playing with these things now. I've got to use the same guys over and over again. Yeah. All the stuff. Good. But uh, this one, uh, I I kind of built it as a trail sled for these vintage rides. Um, on this sled, the one main thing is different about this sled than, like, that Magnum over there is a racing sled. Yeah. That's all stock, as was when it was built. So when I built this thing, a 77 Nitro would have had a liquid cool bumper around the front of it to help cool it. And I was concerned about trail riding. So Kevin Hayes told me that if you look inside there, you'll see an aluminum radiator. So radiator is beefed up, got more cores, holds more liquid. So you won't have a heating problem with that. So uh, I just bought it myself. I'm, I, I think this one's pretty cool. And uh, so I bought this one today. Actually, not many people have seen it, so I bought it. Yeah, it's and, a beautiful sled. And, uh, so, anyway, that's the uh, story on that. Good deal. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Yeah, no problem. That's a pretty good one starting out here. Yeah. Not bad at all, especially considering the, the driving conditions. You know, I thought that would hold a lot of people back. And it probably has some, but it could be a lot worse. You saw how much snow I had in my yard. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought to myself, I probably should stay home, clean my yard. And I got plenty of things to do. But the shows only come around. If you want to be into this basic thing, you just go up and try to show some stuff, you know. Yeah, for sure. It turned out to be a nice day. I thought yeah. it was going to be really cold. I, I, I don't really know wind here. No, it's this great. is nice. The sun's starting to come out. Yeah. Can't beat it. Yeah. It's going to be some wicked nice weather this week coming. Yeah. Good. Good deal. Yeah, we can use some. It's been cold here. All, all Most of January was pretty cold. In my work, a lot of guys would take those days off. Yeah. And I didn't take any time off. I was sitting on a log loader like the one you see out there in the middle of my trailer. You saw my equipment. Yes, yeah. There. Yeah. And it's cold. It's cold sitting out there. You worry, <laughs> yeah, about, you worry about breaking things when it's 35 below zero. Yeah. And, uh, I just, I guess, well, I didn't. Yesterday was the first day. I did, I did both, both. Yeah. It was, it was 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll catch up with you, man. Yeah. Yeah, Ray's got a really nice collection of rubs here. We'll take a closer look at all of these here. I like these uh, stickers that Rupp puts on their racing sleds. Let's see if I can get a close-up on that. This uh, Rupp Magnum has been sold for competitive use only. Operators should wear eye protectors. Lighting and exhaust systems do not meet state and federal requirements for recreational use. Rupp Industries, Inc., Mansfield, Ohio. Yeah. Well, cool. Let's take a closer look at these here. Wow, the sun has come out. It's really bright. Yeah, you got some nice rubs. Well, something tells me some cats are going to come out of that trailer. There we go. I don't know if I recognize that guy or not. Now, where's Lucas? I wanted to get Lucas to talk up some of these, too. There he is. Let's see what's going to come out of this trailer over here. Yeah, that's cool. I was right. There's cats in there. Yeah. We'll give you a chance to pull some of those out. But yeah, this is Brian Robillard from Connecticut. He's come a long way to be here. He's got a really nice collection of citations. He's got some other cool stuff, too. Give him a chance to get situated. But yeah, in case you're just joining us, we're at Crane Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire, and we still have snowmobiles coming in. It's turning into a really nice day. We're happy to see this. Here, another ride coming. Here we go. Connecticut. Yep. Yeah, we left about five o'clock. Wow. Good for you, man. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> Good. We had a trailer failure for my friend, but. Oh, no. Yeah, Do you mind if I have you on camera? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the tongue snapped off on the trailer right here. Oh, really? Did you have to improvise a solution for that? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. We pulled pull out the jack handle. We were able to get to work together. Oh, Good. <laughs> Good. This one here, the escapade? Yep. Yeah. So Nice. 
Like him or hate him. Sure. And I know there's a story behind this sled. You brought it here a couple of years ago. Yep. So uh, right before my grandfather passed away, it was about a week, a week and a half before he passed away. Uh, I had talked to him. Uh, we ended up getting second place. Our yeah. So that was sure, man. So, yeah, I got into it. My wife's into it. My friend Joe, those are his already cats right there. Okay. Panther, the Cutter, and all his children's kitty cats. Yeah. That's cool. Definitely, uh, definitely spreading the addiction. That's cool, man. Better, better to be spreading that than COVID, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, so is that the jack? The jack that I saw on the bed of a pickup? Yeah, okay, yeah. That was you guys. Nice. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, yeah. You're right. I think they only did this one year, right? Uh, so this one was from what I was told is it's like a half year production. Okay. But after that, they went to the the more common. It's like the SS there. style. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, forty-five hundred, thirty-five hundred. Five hundred back in the day. That was a fun sled. Oh yeah. You could really hang the tail out. Yeah, I got an ADSS. Yeah, and, uh, that's a, with a twin carb and a short track. Very, very fun sled. Sweet. Yeah, this one, uh, this one right here, I, it's actually a barn find. The only thing I really did to it was <laughs> help to get it running. Yeah. So, just found in a barn, and uh, I believe it was, I believe it was for Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, not perfect, but it's fun. I ride it around. Very cool. Yeah, we'll have to have you on the podcast again sometime. Yeah. Uh, that's my friend Joe and his son Joseph. Oh, with that Jag, yeah. <laughs> nice. Get the big oh, the. Uh... I'll be right back. Sixty-seven to seventy-seven. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, so a little after 10 and people are still rolling in. I want to catch up with Lucas over here. Hey, how you doing, Lucas? Good. You feel like talking up some of these sleds like that Formula 2? or? All right, cool. I can see you, man. Yeah, I'm going to get him Monday. 
I'm pretty excited about it. But somebody said that the uh, I I don't I still don't know my homework on the race and stuff. Somebody said that the three forty mod has to have Mobile show they have it every year. First week in last year due to COVID, but we're back and better than ever. It's a great show. If you can't make it this year. fame, and there's plaques with images of all of the inductees. On the wall, well, the hill, he's going to turn around. Let's check this out. Vintage Arctic Cat in the house. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Yeah, some really nice cats. I like it. Well done, Yeah, this is really nice. I see you are going by. Oh, he's pulling out another one. Snow Traveler. Wow. Oh, okay, I know who that is. Cool, yeah. I can't think of his name, but he's got a lot of really old sleds. Traffic jam here. Uh, I'm always in this guy's way here. Let me get a, find another spot altogether here because I'm in everybody's way. So I think those people just went by going the other direction and they saw all this going on and turned around to come check it out. That's the way it goes when you get a show right on the snowmobile trail.
There we go. All right, so I'm going to make another pass or through, pass or two by here. And you know, we're going to wind down the live podcast, maybe here another five or 10 minutes. I've been going almost an hour. So, has the sled with a little toe behind? No. Uh, where is he? Well, oh, I think uh, there's his son in the black hoodie there, right? Facing away from us. Uh, yeah. Good idea. I don't know if it's him. I know. See the guy with the yellow gloves? He knows a lot about it, too. I guess he's the Sally. He he's, sold it to him or something like that. So I know that's the Sally family over there. They get a lot of old sleds like that. But he was telling me how he made it by taking a sled, some parts from one sled and another part from another sled. Really? It just would make an interesting story. If yeah. You Good call, man. Thank you. I'm going to go over there. <clears throat> This is the sled he was telling me about. Let's see who this play are. Oh, this is part of the Sally family. Okay, yeah. The old early snowmobiles. They're all well maintained and well restored. Very cool. There's no way really to talk that out, but let's check out check these out. How you doing? We've been live for about an hour here. I think I'm going to wind her down. But thank you to everyone who's been viewing this. And, uh, yeah, turn into a really nice day for this. Yeah, I'm going to wind it down. But thank you, everyone, for viewing. Have a wonderful day. And we will catch you on the...